without affecting one another, you know? Um, and not to be broad, but it's true. I think, I think I've been affected. My path has been changed by everybody who I've encountered in my life. This is the end. I know that that's so dramatic to say, but if you don't already know this about me, I do love a dramatic, detailed, and over-the-top story. And I guess that that's what I'm gonna try and do now. To tell the dramatic and over-the-top story of the past four years of my life in the most authentic, vulnerable, and detailed way that I can. I've been sitting at my desk for days now, trying to figure out just how I want to tell it, and I honestly still don't really have a plan, but I think that the best place to start is the very beginning, before I even got to Cal Poly. That's right, we're starting at the place I once considered the glory days, high school. I was leading a student section at a big rivalry game when I got a call from my mom telling me that I got into Cal Poly followed up by this heartfelt text. I was excited, but more so because we ended up beating AC. Panther pride forever, baby. Cal Poly was never really on my radar, and pretty much anywhere in driving distance could be considered off my radar. My parents made me apply to Cal Poly the night before the app was due, and I had no intention of going. But Plans change, and before I knew it, I was saying goodbye to my little town by the water and driving down to start this adventure that I would soon come to know as the true glory days. Follow your dreams. Yeah. yeah. Move-in day could not come soon enough. And yes, I did try to go by the name Catherine freshman year. Safe to say, it never really caught on. I was full of small town angst and was ready to finally meet some new people and experience something outside of Benicia. I had high hopes and bigger expectations for my first year of college, but it felt like that fall quarter came with a truckload of reality checks. After getting dropped from just about every sorority on campus, almost failing a class for the first time and gaining a generous freshman 15, I felt like I had to have a break coming my way soon. And then February happened. Before I get into the doom and gloom of February 2017, I want to highlight and really appreciate the people that I met in that little red brick dorm. It's where I met Elle, Larkin, Brookie, Liv, and more people that would soon become main characters in my college life. Larkin and I really leaned on each other for support while we were navigating living away from home and all of the other fun lessons that that first quarter throws at you and there's really no way I would have made it through without her living just two feet away from me. All in all, there was no shortage of energy and eager 18-year-olds ready to have fun in that dorm, and I truly will never forget all of the people that I met during the quarter and a half that I was there. So shout out to all of the free monsters out there that are watching this. I love you guys. But now, let's get back to February. The recent rain is causing the hillside above a Cal Poly dorm to move. There is cracking and slow movement of the soil near Fremont Hall. The dorm was evacuated because of the hillside sliding into the building. Fremont Hall remains closed. So, we're getting evacuated right now? Yep, that's right. A freaking <gasps> mudslide took out my freshman dorm halfway through winter quarter. Long story short, all Fremont Hall residents were scattered across campus in whatever beds were open and the open bed that I was assigned to just happened to be a top bunk in a glorified storage room. Basically, all red bricks have a study lounge and then a silent study lounge in the very back of the building, which is where I got to call home for the remainder of my freshman year. Crash pad, as we called it, is one of my favorite memories from college and provided a ton of fun moments, like having to walk through the main study lounge in our towels just to get to our dorm room. It definitely wasn't the typical housing situation, but holy shit, did freshman year get even better after we moved in.
first year was great, but with all the pressure that comes along with the saying, the best four years of your life, freshman year kind of felt like a race to have the best time and rack up the best memories to bring back to your hometown. And at some points, I just felt like I was kind of faking it and questioned if Cal Poly really was the best place for me. I wanted to go into my second year with a good attitude and try to find ways to prove to myself that I needed to stay. My second year of college is the hardest for me to break down and was definitely a year of growth for me, full of exciting and fun highs and really scary and dark lows. But before I unpack that loaded statement, let me give you some background info. Rihanna and Angel moved me into my first apartment that September, and after probably the funnest move-in weekend I'll ever have, I was ready to put all of my effort into making this year count. With two jobs set up, shout out Campus Dining and Mustang News, and all of my friends living within walking distance, I designed my fall quarter to give me as little time to wonder if slow was right for me as possible. Fall quarter was a crazy rush of going from one thing to the next, and I think I filled up my schedule a little too much to see that I was overworking myself. But the busyness forced me to meet so many more people, experience new things, and push my comfort zone farther than the year before. I joined a sorority, had a somewhat defined friend group, and was thinking that I had this college thing somewhat figured out. I had been making cheesy montages since senior year of high school to post on my Instagram and just document my friends and our lives. And the summer before my sophomore year, I saved up and bought a brand new big girl camera and decided to put more effort into videography and photography. And by the start of winter quarter, I was booking my first freelance gigs and taking on roles in my organizations that pushed me creatively, which honestly scared the living shit out of me. But the extracurriculars, the jobs, and navigating this new territory of freelance work added a lot of stress to my life. On top of that, I wanted to change my major to something different pretty much every week. From business to journalism, graphic communication, anything sounded more interesting than what I was studying. All of the stress and anxiety over my major added up fast. And just like the year before, the infamous winter quarter blues hit me like a freight train. I have no problem being open about my journey with mental health and the struggles it's brought me throughout my college career. So let me tell you, sophomore year sadness hit different. Like clockwork, I would come home from class every day that quarter, crying my parents, confused about why I was feeling how I felt, desperately wanting the high-spirited, funny girl I always thought I was, back. And my voicemail inbox pretty much always was full of messages like this. Hey, Blue. Here we're not having a great day. Just calling to rescue you. Love you. I looked in the mirror and hated everything that stared back at me. And finally, those daily discussions with my parents led to the idea that I could leave Cal Poly and just take some time to figure myself out. I never felt so alone, felt so alone but just when I was feeling the most lost, I got my first glimmer of hope that things would get better and I could stick it out for the rest of the year. I got accepted into an abroad program for the upcoming fall quarter. You'll see when we get to that part why Prague was the best experience of my life, but I also believed it saved my life. Knowing that I had something to look forward to kept me pushing through that dark time. If I dropped out of Cal Poly, I couldn't go to Prague. And although I didn't know what to expect, I knew that I would never get this chance again. So my spring quarter, I worked like hell to improve my mental health. I leaned on my friends for support and made the most of the rest of the year. We filled spring quarter up with lake trips. Concerts and lots of good people. I could feel my network of friends expanding and I loved it. I think freshman year, a lot of the time, I was scared to put myself out there, but this spring quarter, I really made efforts to say yes to more things with different people. Now, I don't want it to seem like my sophomore year was nothing but struggles and hard times which is why I said it's the hardest to explain because I also consider it one of my favorite years. I made so many memories and especially cherished living in a tiny room with Brooklyn. We were pretty much constantly laughing, watching Vine compilations, trying to start a vlog, and just being stupid college roommates together the whole year. I'm so grateful for her and all of the other people that pulled me through. Like I said, 
It was the year of growth and realizing that it's okay to not be the same person you were in high school. I was evolving, and I think by the end of the year, I realized that I didn't have to hate the new person that I was becoming. That summer was unknowingly probably my last summer in Benicia for a while. I worked two jobs trying to save up as much money as possible, got to spend a lot of time with my hometown friends, and was constantly working on the ultimate European bucket list. It was a great summer, but I also could not wait for it to end so I could get started on my big adventure. Finally, I packed up my bags, flew the 15 or so long hours to Europe, and had the best trip with my mom traveling a bit before I moved into a little apartment above a Czech bar. I'm fully aware that I'm the typical annoying ass college study abroad girl, but whatever. It's my video, so I'm going to string out this section to its fullest potential. During my time abroad, I really challenged myself creatively to capture as much of the beauty around me as possible. I wanted to document my experience perfectly so that I could look back years from then and remember it all. While I was there, I started to get the idea in my head that I could actually pursue something with videography. That thought pushed me to make the most of my quarter abroad and to make every trip look like a movie. Welcome to the Tyler Monday show. As you can see, we're having... <laughs> Yeah, pretty much my biggest adventure so far. I learned so much and really feel like I grew up while I was there. Andrew, Liv, Liv, and I traveled together for the majority of our trips and those three made the long travel days and frustrating moments of language barriers and confusing public transportation systems so, so worth it. We got to do things I never thought I'd be able to say I've done, from cliff jumping in Italy to seeing the Pope and experiencing firsthand the hills are in fact alive with the sound of music, we made every day over there count. People say that you can learn the most about others from traveling with them, and I think part of the reason the four of us became instant friends is because we were able to travel so well together. We would pack our days full of things that would make each of us satisfied with the trip, and we would always make time for an unknown goodie. Oh my god. <laughs> you <Good> work. <laughs> Those guys and the rest of my friends abroad are the people that make up some of my fondest memories of college. Those four months were a whirlwind of newness, discomfort, and independence, and it was such a blessing to get to experience it all with such genuine and fun people. Abroad wasn't all just this beautiful eat, pray, love moment though. Like getting kicked out of Oktoberfest, almost getting kicked out of our program, and getting food poisoning in the tiny town of Chesky Krumwa before busing to Vienna. But. It was the highs and lows of my abroad experience that made it what it was. I left Prague with a newfound confidence in myself as a person of the world, as lame as that sounds. But after four months of discovering new places, meeting new people, and creating as much as possible, I felt so much more sure of myself, how I fit into the world, and what I wanted to prioritize in my life. And as we all know, all good things must come to an end, and it was time for me to get back to the real world and finish the rest of my third year. That quarter, Elle and I moved into a giant pink sorority house. A sentence I never thought I'd be saying, but hey, the food was free and the company was great. It's also the quarter that Elle and I became pretty much attached at the hip. I'll spare you all the long lecture I could give about how much that girl means to me, but just know that she's a one-of-a-kind friend and a person that I'm beyond grateful to have in my life. But when I got back from the shiny and glittery bubble I was living in back in Europe, I was in no rush to get back to sitting in a classroom all day and studying all night. Which brings us back to the fun game of will Katie actually drop out of college? Spoiler alert, I chickened out. And by the middle of junior year, I realized I had missed my window for a big degree change, and I knew I needed to start accepting as many freelance jobs as possible to build my portfolio and set a foundation for myself. And now, while I was really focused on my work, I also was just really focused on having fun. Sorry, mom and dad, I know that that doesn't sound great, but I was. 
So those were the goals for the rest of my third year. Lay the groundwork for a successful future and a fun-ass last year and a half of college. And still, amidst the fun and the grind, all I wanted to do was travel and plan itineraries for future trips and recruit friends to promise that they'll go with me. Luckily, I did have one big trip coming up that summer, New York. I feel like I've been dreaming of New York for years and have always known that it'd be a place I'd wanna be one day after college. So I needed to check it out beyond the YouTube videos and Pinterest boards I've stalked about the city and just go. So, with just a few weeks notice, me and some friends booked our flights and explored the city as much as we could in five days. While I was there, I was stopped by a videographer on the street who asked if I wanted some footage of myself in front of the Manhattan Bridge. He started asking me questions about my creative style, my inspiration, and what makes me want to get out and create. I honestly didn't really have any answers for him. What was pushing me to create? My phone broke on the car ride to the airport and then our flight got delayed six hours, which gave me plenty of time to think more about those questions. I became okay with the fact that I didn't have an answer right then, but I was motivated to start discovering the answers in this upcoming year, which brings us to my fourth and final year of college. After a fairly sleepy summer, I was stoked for the quarter to begin, my roommates all to move in and to start enjoying our last year of college. We hit the ground running, savoring all of the classic joys that that fall quarter brings. I've always been an extremely sentimental person and like to think that I do a fairly good job of appreciating moments as I'm living in them. Probably because I have that Andy quote from The Office constantly playing in my head. I wish there was a way to know you're in the good old days before you've actually left them. A lot of fall quarter I spent looking around at these amazing friends that I somehow got lucky enough to know and then this beautiful little place that I've called home since I was that 18 year old girl wanting to rebrand herself as Catherine, the cool college kid. All of these sappy and sentimental emotions gave me the final push to do what I've been wanting to do for years, start a freaking vlog. I was beyond nervous to put myself out there like that, scared that I'd come off as annoying or cringy. Shout out high school bullies for making me perpetually anxious that I'm gonna embarrass myself. But I feel like my confidence went up kind of out of nowhere right before going into winter quarter and I just said, fuck it, let's do it. And luckily I had the best cast of people to be in the vlogs and help me finish them mostly on time. So I started the vlog and I captured every week of my last and favorite quarter of college. Let's get into episode one. Now, 
I'd be lying if I threw together these montages of my senior year, said it was dope, and left it at that. My fourth year wasn't perfect, and these montages definitely paint the picture that it was close to that. But, as we all know, those two quarters were all we got out of our senior year, and after being in isolation and coming to terms with the fact that my college experience was over before it should have been, I decided to try my best to only remember the good parts. Because in the end, there were a whole hell of a lot of good parts. And as I close out the rest of my senior year in quarantine, I'd like to say I got a lot better at recognizing all the good that lies in the small moments. <laughs> we had to finish our college experience without big celebrations or traditions. We had to get creative and lean into the few people we were able to be around and make the most of what we can all agree is a pretty shitty situation. And we did just that. We graduated and we moved on to whatever big thing we had planned next, right? Well, not so much. <laughs> Which is why I'm here, months after the fact, finishing this project. I think one of the main reasons it took me so long to complete this is due to the fact that I don't know what this next chapter holds, and my own insecurities surrounding that reality. I so wanted a grandiose next step to flaunt at the end of this video to prove that I was still on track, despite the ever-present battle of not knowing what I want to do with my life. Which goes to show that too many times in my life, my motivations have been driven by the need for approval from others. Searching for that reassurance that I'm on the right path and that the path I'm on is going to sound shiny and exciting to those watching. And while I have no clue what this next chapter is going to end up looking like, I'm becoming less and less concerned with what other people will think about that. Now that life is so dissimilar from what it used to be, I can take a step back and look at my college years and say confidently that I'm not filled with any big regrets or disappointments. But if I could give my younger self or anyone watching this a piece of advice, it would be to stop comparing yourself to others and try to find the beauty in your own life, as simple as it may be. That's what I've learned over the years with video editing. You can pretty much make anything look cool if you put enough effort into it. And that's what I want to start doing with my life in general, putting in the effort in my daily life to remember that it's pretty great. Yes, I still struggle with my mental health, I don't have my next chapter mapped out, and the world is complete chaos right now. But I know that I'll eventually find my place, and I might as well find ways to be happy in this in-between stage that I'm in. If there's one thing I've learned during this pandemic, it's that life can change so quickly. So enjoy where you are, even if it's not close to what you planned. Say goodbye to the camera. Bye. We'll see you later. See you later.